have the same uh, glasses frames? They look, no, I think they're a little bit different. They look similar, though. Actually, they might yeah. be the same. I think there might be a bit different. Are you the Ray Bans? You got them. No, I think these are just some like, oh, Jones. Jones? Oh, okay, okay. These are the only ones that look good on my face. <laughs> so I got them special ordered. I have another pair I got with these. They're kind of like a thicker frame, almost like a okay, Clark Kent type of thing. Yeah. But, um, can't find them. Did you ever um like is your is your eyes are they are nearsighted or far sighted? Um I struggle to see things that are far away. Yeah, me too. Like I gotta squint basically. I know. It's super annoying. Yeah, I think it's attributed to my wrinkles over the years. Yeah, definitely. Do you ever wear uh, contacts, though? No, do you? No, man. I, I can't get them in my eyeballs. Yeah, my friend, uh, well, my, my girlfriend's best friend, Miranda, she always visits here, and she does contacts like sometimes, and it seems like such a battle to get those things like in and out, and like you can lose them, and and all that you know i just don't think it's worth it i i really only wear mine like at home when i'm working or like doing podcasts looking at a screen basically you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean i tried contacts like years ago and i would like try to put in my eye and like it'd just be so irritating and man it'd be like my eye would get scratched up and my memory like crying and my eyes would be all red i'm just like what the fuck <laughs> uh, what like i'd rather just wear glasses like i don't i don't really mind wearing glasses it doesn't really bother me after you have them on long enough, like you forget that they're even on. We just can't like you can't train properly with them on. That's the only thing I found. It's like really annoying to train with them on. No, yeah, I know. I uh I've I've never attempted that. I don't I don't need them like that bad, you know? Yeah. The only time I could use them when I don't wear them is when I'm driving in the nighttime and it's raining outside. Mm -hmm. Because like the glare makes me like I'm 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 basically blind if it's in, in the nighttime and raining. <laughs> I know, right? Do you have to? Uh, do you have to wear glasses like on your driver's license? It says you need glasses. No, my, oh, dude, my, my, funny story. Yeah. Funny story. When I first moved to, to Ontario, I had to go get like a driver's license, like a like an Ontario driver's license, and they make you do this like really quick like eye test. Mm -hmm. And so when she first got me to do it, the lady that was working at the desk, I look into the things. And it's like everything's blurry. Like, like I couldn't see anything. Like it was like I could see the letters, but they were super blurry. I couldn't make them out. And I was like starting to have like a borderline anxiety attack. I was like, man, am I not gonna be able to get my driver's license here? Like oh, holy sure. shit, right? And then I'm I tell her, I'm like, I'm just like, I can't see anything. Like, this is really weird. And she goes, and then another lady comes over, she's like, Oh yeah, that one's broken. Just go over to this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go one over and it's like totally fine. So it's probably not that bad. No, no. Like like I said, in the daytime, I'm fine. In the nighttime, if it's clear, I'm fine. But it's just the it's just a rain and then the glare from the like the street lights and headlights from the cars. I can still see, but it's just kind of I gotta focus. Like Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, it's crazy because I mean I've been I've been driving and obviously not wearing glasses, like even though I need them for like probably five years. But then you put them on, you're like, damn, like I can actually see far. Like I can read signs. Like, you know, it's like a huge difference. It's crazy. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. Even like, even right now, like the letters on the keyboard in front of me. Yeah. Like if I just do this, like they're so much more blurry. Yeah. Same here. It gets way worse when you're tired too. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. In the nighttime, dude, I feel like I'm like blind. I noticed recently since I've been sleeping earlier and getting better deep sleep and stuff that now I actually don't need to wear my glasses as much as I did like a few weeks ago. So it plays a huge role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll always just wear mine at home just because I find like if I it's all work for like seven or eight hours at a time sometimes. Yeah. And I find like if I do that and don't wear my glasses, like I'll get like a headache, like I get super irritable. Like all those things, like just from so much screen time going back and forth between my phone and my my laptop. Do you um? So do you wear your glasses when you're working, like in the morning, and you just take them off the train? 
Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't love doing that though. Me neither. I, you, you feel weird after, right? But... Yeah. That, that's the one thing. So I try to just kind of get through my day and then put them on like afterwards. After I, do that, I, I do that sometimes too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what Andrea Shaw does too. I was with her uh, yesterday uh, or sorry, day before yesterday when we were doing the grindstone blends thing and um, when she was wearing her glasses and then we called her over to do like another like segment or whatever. And she's like, oh no, like, like I'm done. Like my glasses are on, like I'm done for the day. <laughs> like basically, <laughs> like she still did it, but she, but, but it's like, once you yeah. take them, once you put them on and you take them off, it's like, uh, now you're all kind of fucked up. So yeah, yeah. struggle wearing glasses. But anyways. So she was in, she was in Toronto. Yeah, man. So she lives in Michigan. So they literally take that. They take a helicopter, like forty-five minutes. They pick her up and they helicopter back over here to uh, to London. Wow. Yeah. So uh, we were at this. We at this guy's uh, mansion, who's a business partner with Grindstone, and like, it's just unreal. Like he's got like like boats and helicopters and like Ferraris all in his garage. Basically, he has like this giant garage that he turned into like a party room but it's like it's like a whole club it's it's unreal wow and like his house is just like next level like uh you know like he, he like he literally has like when you walk in the front door like the front step is like a glass see-through like a waterfall underneath with like ice cubes and fish and like it's just like like i've never seen like a house like that with that much like intricate <laughs> shit in it it's like really cool so wow. yeah that's unreal that's uh life goals that's for sure <laughs> yeah buddy <laughs> yeah <laughs> we better start some kind of innovative business <laughs> yeah dude i know man like uh that's it man just become an investor basically yeah yeah are you trained today already no i got a rest day today I, i've been uh saturday is like my busiest check-in day so yeah i've just been pretty much working all day took my dog for a walk not long ago nice nice yeah. You guys uh guys do anything tonight? Anything fun or just hanging? No, we're just hanging out. Chloe's mom is coming here tomorrow morning. So she's been like cleaning all day and getting the house like ready for her mom's arrival. Yeah. So she, she's staying with us for like four or five days. Oh, so nice. we're gonna go out to supper tomorrow night with her. But uh yeah, I'm just enjoying relaxing, man. I find like you know, prep season's underway now, so a lot of clients competing, like traveling to shows a lot. So anytime I can just like relax, like I just try to take advantage of it. Hundred percent. Uh, I feel like these days, like there's nothing that really interests me like to do other than just what we already do. You know, just work and chill and bodybuild and like I don't know. Like, you know, I think it, it comes with just being so focused on one thing. You know, like it's like when you're. Like we prioritize our rest. We have, we know how important it is, and like we just want to like relax and eat our meals because we know how important that is. So it's like it's kind of like when you're so focused on something, it's like even though you might want to go out and do stuff and like be social, it's like when that impedes your focus, I think you just like naturally just kind of like don't want to do it or like or just like stray away from doing it, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like it's an inconvenience no matter what. I know, right? Like I was I was talking with Nat. She's like. Don't you want to do anything fun? I'm like, I, I do want to do fun stuff, but I don't want to, I don't want to force myself to be social, um, like with people that I don't actually want to hang out with. You know what I mean? Like, if I don't really want to like spend my time or energy with someone, like I'm just not going to do it at all anymore. Like we talked about that, like even with clients. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that with even like social settings, you know, it's like you're also in prep though. I think when you're in prep, like I, I'm like even, yeah. I'm even more isolated, like <laughs> way more than I am in off season. In off season, I'm still pretty isolated. You know, like know. We'll, we'll we'll let ourselves go out like maybe once every couple of months or something like that if we if we feel like we need it, you know. But I mean, we 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 didn't do anything for a couple of months, and then we went on vacation. So, you know, a week of just like meeting people every day and like you know being in the pool and stuff like that. Like we're just like our social, you know, <laughs> ticker was just max. Like yeah, we haven't done anything since we've been back from vacation. And that that's like been a month now. So yeah. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, man. I'm going by so fast, man. It's insane. I was just saying that. Yeah. It's insane. I feel like you wake up and then the morning is done. And then you train and the afternoon's done. And then the evening, it's just, I don't know, man. I feel like I wonder if that's just because, like you said, like we're so focused on something right now. The days are just maxed out, man. 
Yeah. Like, I don't have like much like free time. Like really, like maybe the last couple hours of the day, I have like nothing to do. And I'll just like sit on the couch with my dog, you know, play with him and stuff. Watch yeah. like I've it's so funny, like because usually like I only get time to chill out like the last like my last meal basically. Like I'll make my last meal, I'll get on the couch. I eat the meal. I watch like 30, 40 minutes of a movie and I just fall asleep and I go to bed. It's like, I, I've seen the first 40 minutes of so many movies. I'm the same way. Literally yeah. the same way. Yeah. And then for some reason, I'll never like try to like finish the movie the next day. I'll start a new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that one wasn't that good. I'll just move on to something else. Like, I know. Like, I don't know, man. Like I just, I'm, I'm just like, I just want to go to bed. <laughs> wake yeah. up and i've been enjoying mornings more than evenings you know it's like i, I want to wake up early and kind of have like that morning it's like it's been nice in the morning sunrise at 6 a.m and stuff so yeah 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 i love getting in bed and like when my day is done you know so much better too you know like they say like it makes a big difference you get that like between like 10 p.m and, and 12 a.m that sleep there versus like the 12 a.m to like 2 a.m kind of a sleep i feel like that definitely makes a big difference man yeah, bro. There's no way I'm staying up past eleven. Like, I'm usually getting to bed around like ten forty five. And then I'm definitely passed out by eleven. Wake up probably around three o'clock to use the bathroom, then go back to sleep and I wake up at like six thirty seven every day. Yeah. So pretty yeah. much seven, eight hours a night. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So Yeah. Dude, the gym the gym was popping today. And you know, like uh I'm I feel like people dude, like there was this guy that Literally just parked, like, you know, you know where there's all the, the parking, like, on the wall facing in the back, the brick wall? So I parked there, and some dude rolls up, and he parks right behind me. And it's, there's no, there's a couple spots there, but then he parked in the one that's not a spot. I was just about to, like, lose it on the guy, because I'm, like, I'm about to pull out, and you just parked, you just parked me in, basically. Like, what the fuck? So, yeah, dude. Like, no consideration. But uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, that's, you know what, that's almost like, I guess where I'm from, like, traffic's not as bad and stuff like that, like, at all. But that's one thing I noticed, like, in certain situations, like, people are inconsiderate, like, here. I guess it's, I mean, it's to be expected. It's a big, super busy city, all different cultures and stuff like that. Like, so, like, I'm not, I'm not really surprised. But, I mean, even uh, my girlfriend, like, she was parked at the gym not long ago, maybe a week or two ago. And whoever was parked next to her, like, absolutely took out her her mirror her side mirror with their door and just like drove away and you know like i saw like we got it all on film <laughs> like, oh shit <laughs> i remember from the gym so like and it's just like and it was a guy like and like i don't know i guess it's just the way i was raised like properly like if you're if you're a man and you like destroy someone's property by accident like you go to the gym leave your information you know be like hey if someone comes up and you know some of their mirror was broken with me, like get them to get in touch with me, you know, yeah. or, or put something on their windshield, like your information so they can get in touch with you and you can figure out a way to replace it or whatever. Um, so, and that kind of stuff just bothers me, you know? Yeah. But I also feel bad for that person that does like that, that type of person that does that. Cause like, you're just like a weak person, like, you yeah. know, to like do something bad like that to someone you don't know and not take responsibility. Like you don't know what someone else is going through. Like that could be someone that can't afford to fix that mirror. Yeah. Right. And then they exactly. get pulled over by the cops because they don't got a mirror. Like, and it just, it just, it just makes their life worse. Right. So yeah. there's, there's just so many little soft, weak pussy men in our society today. And it, and it brings down, it brings down our <laughs> gender <laughs> as a whole, like, you know, Dude, even online, and I want to talk about that, but but since you brought up uh, Chloe in the mirror, Nat, she um she was backing out from her parking spot. This was like um, last winter, I think it was, or it was like last year anyways. But there was someone that was parked illegally al along the fence. Like people would park there, you know, like all legally and stuff. And she, she backed out and, and she hit the guy's car. And like immediately, like she put her, she put a note on the thing and uh and you know got a hold of the guy and like paid the guy like 500 bucks like for like the scratch or whatever like it was just a little scratch um but i was like i was like dude like that's that was his fault because he was parked there illegally so really you know she could have probably you know gotten away with not paying him anything but yeah. she's a good person she's like oh i feel bad like i hit his car and i was like yeah i told like you know at the end of the day what's 500 bucks like just to be a bigger person and move on versus like 
trying to like skim around it or like it's just like whatever you know what i mean you take the fault and like just be more careful next time but there, dude 100 percent. there's so many people that would have just done that and just drove off man well like yeah, yeah it's just like people are just so for themselves these days and like it's like it's so foreign to see someone do like something selfless and i think that's why it's so celebrated like you see on social media but most of the time it's people taking videos of themselves doing like selfless things and then posting it but yeah. you know what i mean you, you see it online and you're just like, oh, wow, like, look at someone doing something for someone else. Like, that's not helping them. But, like, I was walking Gus yesterday. And it was, like, raining out. This mom is, like, had a baby in a stroller, just, like, going through a parking, like, lot to get into, like, a store. And this guy is, like, pulling into the parking lot in, like, a BMW SUV, this, like, older man. And she's, like, kind of, she's, like, in his way of him getting in the parking lot. And she and he, like, honks the horn at her. Oh, my God. Like, and I, I took everything in me, man, to not just wait for him to get out and say something to him. But, like, she turned around and, like, gave him a look. <laughs> like, like, dude, she's there with a baby. You're in your SUV. It's raining out. Like, you don't beep at a lady with her baby. Just wait. Like, no. Like, like, like who do you think you are? I just don't understand. Like, you know. Yeah, these guys need to take some tests or something. I don't know, man. It's the low, low test betas. Yeah, literally, dude. It's the it's the fucking sigmas. That's what it is. It's these guys that that call themselves sigmas. You know, you know about that. They're absolute clowns, man. They have like such a complex, like this, like sigma stuff, man. It's like it's actually intense, and just like their whole the way they even think about like women and stuff like that, and the way they view women and like like roles and like all this stuff. It's just it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's, it's all just a made up fantasy. It's like really bizarre, eh? It's like a way to make themselves feel like they're above like women, even though they don't like because they're unable to like achieve a relationship with one. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't, you know, they're not up to our standards anyway. Yeah. Even strike out every time I try to talk to one. <laughs> the stigma male moves alone in the darkness. It's like, what the fuck, dude? Like you're yeah, in it's your not face. By choice, it's not by choice, bro. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> this, this is what happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't just you can't just make up who you like you're either an alpha or a beta like sigma is just a fucking made up fantasy bro you know yeah no 100 percent. and and that's it dude like these are the guys like we were talking with kurt earlier about like the shit that he takes when he posts he just posts information and yeah. when you're trying to post information you have like these fucking betas or sigmas that come on here and they try to i don't know what they're trying to do they're trying to prove that they're smarter than you because they can like pull up a study on pubmed that like prove something but the study doesn't prove anything man and especially when you're trying to come onto a phd endocrinologist page who's giving out good information or you come onto your page or my page or ifbb professional bodybuilders and trying to tell us like uh gh doesn't build muscle or uh you, you know um animal protein doesn't build muscle that one was just like super bizarre but like yeah because i posted that fucking celery thing and now i got like all these like vegans like <laughs> like oh animal protein's bad for you i'm like what the fuck are you talking about yeah no well dude i even had someone write me uh like i posted an arm day a couple days ago and they write me and they're like oh like you're, you shouldn't be like engaging your shoulder like on a bicep curl like on an easy bar, bar curl i was like curling all the way up to fully contract and i'm like well like your bicep inserts into your shoulder though I'm like, so if I like full, if I get a little bit of shoulder flexion at the top of my rep, I'm going to fully contract my bicep that way. 100%. So, so I go to this, this guy's profile and he's like, doesn't even look like he works out. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I'm like a pro bodybuilder with like 22 inch arms. It's like, you don't think I've fucking exhausted every single possible way to do a bicep curl to get the most out of it? Like, do you realize like how many of these I've done? It's like, like, what are you even thinking? Like making, a, like writing me to say that. It, like, it's mind blowing. It's mind. -blowing. Imagine me like writing like a NASCAR driver. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like I watched your last race, man, and like the way you handled that turn, just like you know, this is what I would have did. <laughs> it's so weird, man, because I feel like this is like a new phenomenon where now all of a sudden there's there's more more people than ever posting this negativity. You know, I saw Dusty Hanshaw's post. That he just oh, made man. a post about his wife, and then all of a sudden there was like hundreds of comments of people being like, "Oh man, like that doesn't look good. Like, why would a girl want to take fucking tests?" And like, like who are these people, and why do they feel the need 
to come onto someone else's page and try to put them down. Obviously, it's an insecurity thing. Obviously, it's like they're trying to save their egos and make themselves feel better. But it's new on Instagram because I, I understood this is a, a thing for TikTok and this would be like, you know, pretty common. But now they're all over Instagram too. So I think it's just like, I don't know, man, the world we're living in is getting wild. Yeah, I, I think it's just like anytime people get a chance to bring someone down, it's just like makes them feel better. And it's like when they see something like that where they know probably other people are going to do the same, then it's like mob mentality. So it's like, oh, now I'm I'm saying something bad about this person, but all these other people are too. So that makes it even okay, feel more okay to them and more like justified. Yeah. When in reality, like you said, it's all stemming from each individual person's insecurity. Like a guy sees a really muscular chick like that. You know what I mean? Like, they don't like that right but it's like but like any bodybuilder like a guy like us who has more muscle than that female will just be like oh damn like that took a lot of hard work like you know that doesn't mean like we don't we're not we don't have to be sexually attracted to it or necessarily like love how she looks but like we know that it took work so we're gonna like applaud that like regardless yeah you know yeah and like and because we're bodybuilders too like we just understand like everyone's just on their own journey and has their own need for doing something like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think a lot of people from the outside looking in think like we all do this for attention or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean, not understanding like it goes so much more deep than that. Like, yeah, a hundred percent. Like they, I think what they think is that we do this just to be attractive. Like it's just for vanity, but you know, obviously that plays a role, like, but we like the way we look and that's the most important thing. Like we're not doing it to attract like a female or whatever. Like we have our girls and like, they like the way we look and, to be honest, I, I'm sure like our fucking girls would like us if we were 50 pounds heavier or 50 pounds smaller. Like that doesn't really matter to them. They like who we are. And it yeah. should always be like that. Like what you look like shouldn't really matter that much. Cause we, we like, even if like maybe silently we might judge like a fat person, like, you know, you see them at the grocery stores, like the grocery carts full of like garbage. And you're like, oh damn, like whatever. But we would never, we would never go onto someone else's page and be like, oh wow, you're so disgustingly fat. Like, you know how could you fucking let that happen like we don't care that much you know what i mean it's like exactly exactly just kind of like i know like like even if we silently judge them or whatever it's like we just like a little prayer for them like hey hopefully whatever like they're living their life the way they want to whatever cool move on like yeah but to obsess so much is like man like wow and, and to go out of your way to make someone else feel bad like I, that's what i don't get it's like it's like yeah. have your judgment if you want have it in your mind like i i see some stuff on social media you know, and, and it's like some of those reels where, you know, someone posts something unfortunate for them and a lot of people comment and some of the comments are funny. Yeah. And like, you know, you want to, you get the temptation to chime in, but like, I never do. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I don't need to contribute to this. Like, like you no. know what I mean? It's not, it's not doing anything for me and it's definitely not doing anything for this person. So just shut your mouth. So it's just like the old saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, just don't say it. Exactly. You know? and, and I think like, never, you know, like, the, the lesson that, that we at least like what I'm I'm thinking like, Hey, how can I make this a positive? And for anybody who, who else is listening and maybe they feel like they're like under attack by somebody online, just try to turn it into a positive. Just realize that this person is spending their time, their energy to engage with you. And that is actually directly helping your, your algorithm and it's helping boost your posts and other people end up engaging with that person. And it does, it does help in the long run. Like we were talking about earlier, like uh, on, on our chat, uh, like Rich Piana, like he, he spoke about how, most of his um like most of his followers and fans i guess you could call them they were like haters like it was like a 60 40 70 30 where a lot of these people were haters but those are also the people that support you in a way because even though they're they're hating you they're they're, sent, they're actually giving you a lot of their energy and then it allows your fans to speak up and defend you and then it ends up being like this is like huge like thread on like one post where like people are going back and forth and you just kind of I'll just go in there and chime in and be like, cool comment, bro. Like, you know, just because it, it, it all directly helps, you know, like the end of the day. Um, but because yeah. this is like such an intense thing for people, because yeah, like at first it's like someone's attacking you and like maybe you weren't having the best day and like you're like, oh, fuck, like I really didn't need that right now. Maybe you're feeling emotional already. Like, I know I felt like that for sure. But you just have to remember, like these people don't matter. You know what I mean? Like if they ever saw you in real life, they'd probably fucking bow down because really they're just like insecure people. They would never say any of that to your face. And and even if they did like fucking water off a duck's back, bro, like it has no impact on you whatsoever unless you make it so right. So yeah, exactly. And you decide what kind of energy you give back to it. Like, you know what I mean? Like 
I got, you know, people, we all get negative comments and you feel like kind of going at that person, like defending yourself in some sort of way. But that's like exactly what they want. Exactly. Trying, yeah. trying to ruffle your feathers. You know what I mean? So if you just make like, you know, like you said, like a snarky comment back, like, oh, cool. Or just like a couple of emojis or something like that. Just like let them know that what they said is not affecting you is the best thing to do. Or just don't say anything. And then they just have your stupid little comment there with no replies or reactions back, right? Yeah. Dude, literally today, a post that Chloe and I posted from our trip, like we posted it four weeks ago. Someone commented today, I think it's someone that we might know that made a fake account. Yeah. It was like some account with no posts and like 100 followers. And they it was just like, oh, like look at these two narcissists, like effing losers or something like that, right? Oh yeah. And I just like laugh. I'm just like, wow, like someone like took the time to do this, go back four weeks make this comment like like what do you think this is going to do to me man like my life's good bro <laughs> like yeah. i got a good thing going here like you're not like what you say you went oh oh this person thinks i'm a narcissist oh no like <laughs> you what is gonna i suck i'm gonna go cry in bed now like you know it's just it's comical to me so i'm like you know it sucks to be that guy <laughs> right yeah 100 percent. like uh <laughs> nat was getting riled up because she's like what the fuck like these people are so ignorant like She's like, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna fucking come out these people. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't even bother. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause, cause, like, she sees that and she's like, oh, I want to defend, I want to defend my man. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I appreciate that so much. Like, you know, our, our girls are like, they're gonna fucking do what they can to make us, you know, defend us and all that. But it's just unnecessary because she's getting all riled up. I'm like, you know what? These people don't matter. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, look at this person's page. You know what I mean? Like, they're, it's sad. This is just a sad person, you know? <laughs> yeah. So and then we ended up just like laughing at it because it's just like, what else are you going to do? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. You, if you let it bother you, then you're, you're letting them have what they want. And there's just no need because these people don't mean anything to you. They're not important to you. Like, there's like a very small group of people whose opinions matter to me. You know what I mean? Like, if I respect you and like, you're my peer, you know, or my friend, like, then, then I care about what you think, right? But if you're outside of that, why would I care about what, what you think? You're not, you don't have, you don't have any say in my life or effect on my life. You know, so why am I going to give you one? Exactly. Especially with negative. If you want to come into my life and be a positive person and support me, come on in. Like, that's great, right? But if yeah. you're going to come to me with negativity, dude, I will pretend you don't exist so fast, right? And same thing with people who were my friends or my peers who crossed me in some type of way or, you know, I found out they weren't being like loyal to me. Like, I'll put you out of my life so fast that it will be like you weren't even in it. Like, I'll, I can be in the same room with people that I've known for years and pretend like they don't exist. It's not a problem for me. I've done it many times before. Yeah. I'll cut you up that fast because I just have no time for that shit. Yeah. Not even, not like, at all. You know what I mean? Cross me once, you're fucking out. That's that's just how I operate, right? Yeah. And and that's just it, too. It's like, like I, I was talking to a client and he had, like, some trouble with, you know, people. That he Basically, he, he wants to be a bodybuilder and this and that, of course, right? I'm like... I'm like, that's a great goal, man. But, you know, you got to remember, like, not everybody is going to be as excited for you to be a bodybuilder as you are. So the more people you tell, it's like, oh, I'm being, a, I'm going to become a bodybuilder and this and that. 99% of the people, except for like your close circle, they're not going to support you at all. So there's no point of telling them you're what you're planning to do. There's no point of telling those people your goals. Your close circle, they're going to know your goals. And they're going to support you. Everybody else, they can fucking kick rocks, man. Because there's, there's no point of even putting out like to the world, like people will put like, oh, like future IPB pro, future whatever bodybuilder. Just don't even bother, man. The only people that you that need to know that is your coach, your girl, your very small circle. Cause who else is really going to care about your goals? If anything, yeah. they're just if anything, by putting it out there, you're going to get people that are thinking like, oh yeah, this guy's this guy's not going to make it. And now now they're actually manifesting that that you're not going to get there. It's like just just leave it to yourself and just keep it inside your close circle. You write it down to yourself. Everybody else, just fucking move in silence because they they won't know what you're doing until you've done it that way, right? Most most people want you to fail. Yeah. Even people that will never admit it or, or people that you might not think that think that way, but that's actually how it is because you see that just in like our culture, right? Like anytime there's someone successful, high-level athlete, celebrity, actor, something bad happens in their life, everyone jumps on it because everyone gets pleasure out of seeing someone successful fall because it makes them feel better about their situation, not being as high up or have the same social status as that person. Yeah. You know, so you're, you're always going to have more people rooting against you than are, are rooting for you. Right. But you just got to focus on proving your supporters right. Not proving anyone like wrong. You know what yeah. I mean? That, that will keep you going. Like 
proving people that doubt you wrong is is whatever because again at the end of the day like those people's opinions don't really matter but if you're trying to do something and you do have people that support you and believe in you prove them right like you have people that believe in you that are trying to see you go all the way so like when you're feeling down and feeling like quitting and stuff that's what you got to think about don't right. think about the fucking people who want you to fail fuck them yeah. right prove that's just that's just gonna bog you down yeah, yeah, just that's just negative thinking. Like, oh, because then you're mad because then people, you know, every time someone talks shit about you online or on a YouTube video about a bodybuilding show that you're doing, you're going to let it get in your head and frustrate you and put you in a negative space, you know? It's not going to it's not gonna do anything for you, you know? Yeah. Right? I'll, I'll show them. It's like, who are you going to show? Like, you don't even know. You don't even know. You don't, yeah, you don't even know these people, you know? Right. Yeah, like, you know, like, like, who the fuck goes and makes a, a backup troll account and then like goes and comments like people actually do that and yeah you're right like you said that it's probably someone that you know probably is someone that you know that's that's the weird yeah. thing about it right like ew. well definitely because that's why they don't want to do it under their their name right like that's yeah. how weak they are it's like it's one thing they go talk shit about somebody online but then to be afraid to do it under your own name you have to go make up a fake one so you're so there's no consequence to your action yeah right so you're you're just doing it just to try to make someone feel bad or a certain type of way. It's like that's your existence. Like congratulations, you're a waste of fucking air. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Breathing so, our breathing our oxygen, man. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Waste of the air. Oh man, it's all good though. Like water off a duck's back. Yo, where the hell is everybody? <laughs> I thought a couple of people said they were doing it. So did I. They said they were. It's all they good. Just mean, just mean you're eating a meal. All the same, we're doing a pretty good job. I would think so. And yeah, man, like uh, people seem to be enjoying this podcast. It's it's kicking up yeah. views and stuff. So it, that's awesome. And we really appreciate it again, like when you guys share it too. That like that's consistency, that's baby. Consistency. Yeah. Well, either way, we yeah. got a bunch of questions. So, we, we, we so how, what did you train today? Uh, I did chest today, actually. So um, nice. Did you train with Eric? Uh, I did actually. I trained. I trained a little bit with Eric today. Uh, he jumped in halfway through. And we did a little little train together. Guy's fucking strong, man. You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy. Yeah. How much weight this guy can move on certain things, but uh, it, it's awesome. Yeah. So I did. I did chest on Wednesday with Benoit, and I did another chest day today um because i'm linking because i've been training with blake and we're linking up again for this week to kind of sync our schedules so that's why i did a, a double chest day this week but then just going back to uh our regular split which is just chest back hams rest shoulder squads rest uh biceps and triceps go in the, the upper body days obviously so yeah so things are going good for you guys hey you guys are syncing up well like with the training and everything like that yeah, man, I, I dude, like out of like you know all, all the the training partners I've had, I mean, Blake is definitely you know the one that's much better than the rest. Uh, obviously, being an Olympian, he's more focused. Uh, he, he's a family man, so he really gets like you know like what who we are as well. Like we kind of all have the same mindset. It's like you take care of your girl, you take care of your your baby, you take care of your family, you fucking bodybuild. Like there's no there's no drama. Like he never comes into the gym with drama. He never comes in the gym, like distracted on his phone. He never comes in like with excuses. So he's always on time. Like all these things make a huge difference. Um, and then also just like communication too. It's like, if things have to change, just like, let me know right away, vice versa. And then that way we can always sync up and things feel good that way. But versus there's people that are like, oh, I don't want to really communicate things properly. And then like all of a sudden it's last minute, oh, I can't make it. Or, oh, we got to change this workout today. It's just like that. I don't fuck with that. That is yeah. not going to fly. So very, very grateful to be training with Blake. And he trains hard as fuck too. So yeah, that's good. He pushes me, man. So it's, it's been fun. He's a dad. You can't train like a bitch when you're a dad. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. that that Dorian Yates uh, reel that I sent, uh, sent you guys. And it's like, you know, your last set, it's like you got a gun to your baby's head. And, he, and I'm like, you got a baby, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Right. It's like, and also, you, you got to think about, like, what are you training for here? You're training for your future. You're training for your family. This is how we put food on our table. So it's not just as much as we love what we do. And it is it is fun for us. But at the same time, like, it's very serious. And that's why we, we take it seriously when it's time to train. 
We can have fun all the other times, but when we're in that gym for the hour, 90 minutes, it's fucking go time. It should always be like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no messing around, dude. Yeah. You're at a professional level, so it should be professional in everything. And same thing with training partners. Like once you agree to be a training partner with someone, you're like, okay, like we're gonna now we're gonna work together. Like not train together, like this is work, right? Yeah. So you respect my work, I respect your work. My time is important, your time is important. Like you have to have that pack right away. And just like you said, it's like something comes up, communicate it right away. If you can make it work, good. But if you can't, then at least the other person knows that they're doing their own thing. They can mentally prepare for that. They can structure their schedule accordingly. You know what I mean? Maybe get, in, get someone else to jump in with them if they need a spot, like if you're, you're doing legs or something like that. Yep. You know what I mean? But just like that shit of like waiting until the last minute because you don't want to like piss someone off. It's like, well, you piss them off way worse when you wait till the last minute. Way worse, yeah. <laughs> or don't say anything. Just don't show up and then be like, oh, sorry, dude, I like, slept in or some nonsense like that. It's like, grow up. Yeah. God damn. Like, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you, you you know how it is, man. Like, it's it's hard to find a good training partner. So, yeah, it's like, it's awesome that you and Antoine are killing it, man. Me and Blake are killing it now. So, yeah. But Antoine's away right now, right? He's in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, man. They sent him off to Mexico for the weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's out there doing the fit expo fit fit weekend i think it's called uh but he's doing all right he's out there with like seth ferrosi and callum von moger and some of those guys so i think he's probably having a good time yeah yeah that's fun do you um do you feel like you know uh, you miss him a little bit like when you're trained solo when he's gone of course i miss him i love him yeah yeah he's my boy yeah but i mean uh yeah i just like, yesterday i trained alone i had a good session I, I, anytime we can't train together, I try to just take the opportunity, just to like have a workout where I put my headphones in, just like zone in. And then, uh, and even like at Pure, if I'm by myself, like I'll use maybe some different pieces that we don't normally use, just like, just to mix it up, you know, because yeah. then when we're back, like we're kind of just back on the same, same program we always do, right? 100%. It's a different vibe, but yeah, I mean, you train alone once in a while when you're always training with somebody. And then it just reminds you, like, oh, I'm really grateful when I get to train with this person because, you know, you get, you get used to it, obviously, but. There's yeah. there's no doubt about it, man. When you're training with somebody else who's on the same level, you can push harder because you yeah. always have someone there to make sure you're on point with your reps. You always have someone to be like five fucking more when you're like, oh, I've got one more. <laughs> so yeah, I do exactly. I mean, me and Antoine are so on par with like strength and even like muscular endurance. Like even our last leg day, I think we went up to like ten or eleven plates a side of a leg press, and I did like fifteen, and then he was kind of like, that's all, <laughs> and then. I was like, yeah, man, it feels heavy today. And then I get off and then he did like 21. So then I was like, man, I know if he can do 21, I can do 20. So then my next set, I got 20, right? And that's like, how it is, man. Yeah. Like I was, I was slipping, man. Damn it. Like, so I was kind of upset with myself, but then still happy that he went again and did more than me and then pushed me to do more. Like, you exactly. Know? That, and that's the way it should be, man. You know, like if you don't, if you don't have like that little bit of uh, like competitiveness while you're in the gym, then it's like well if someone's way weaker than you and they're just like oh yeah like i'm cool it's like that's not really training like we're, we're trained to be better better than ourselves and also because like you said if you see someone just outperform you you're gonna turn that shit up a notch you're gonna find it yeah oh yeah i kicked it up a notch and then after that set i was basically trying to puke for the rest of the workout <laughs> yeah I, I really felt like that when i've trained with eric a few times because sometimes he'll just be like like what that's that's all you're gonna do and then he'll just like pick up like the whole stack and just start like wrapping it up. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, well, I, obviously I can do more because, right? It just but it, it kicks something in your brain, and sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that little little uh, kick in the ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I don't care to like out train Antoine, but I don't want to be out trained by him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I try to like make it so we're on par. Because, like, being, you know, like, being on par with Antoine is, like, really good. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. yeah that, like, you're, like, you barely survived if you're on par with him. <laughs> Antoine's a maniac, man. He, he He's a one of a kind, that's for sure. Yeah, 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 he is. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to just embrace it, you know? Yeah, 100%. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, no, I, I honestly don't think anybody else is going to join today, which is fine. We can uh, just chill and catch up, but. The OGs. Um, yeah, slackers, eh? We had like we had like five guys that want to do a podcast today, and now they're all they're all slacking. No, it's all good though. It's Saturday, five thirty. Yeah. Their girlfriend yeah. probably ragging on them. What do you mean you're sitting down to do a podcast on Saturday? Right. You know what? The work never stops. 
That's it, right or grinding. Yeah. As DJ Collin would say. Let's uh no, let's do some questions here. So we got a bunch of questions. And we got some good ones too, because they're all they're all mostly gear questions. We got some other ones too. We got one um from Craig Goliath. He says, What's what's more what's more nine K? Creatine or trend? What's more what? Nine thousand. What's more nine thousand? That's his thing. The nine thousand. You know, like uh from DBZ, the over nine thousand. No. It's it's like Vegeta's thing. Like he puts he puts on like his, his visor and he reads like the energy level and he's like nine thousand. Oh, it's over nine thousand. So clearly trend would bring you over nine thousand. Where creatine, you're gonna be like one thousand, two thousand, maybe. Dude. Trend is the dark side. Yeah. Yeah. Trend Tren is like when Anakin became Darth Vader, he took Trend. Do you do you think Trend really affects your, your mental state? Yeah. Without a doubt. What do you feel like when you're on when you when you're on trend? Like just uh, personally. I lose empathy. Yeah. I could I could definitely uh feel that for yeah. sure. I, I lose empathy. I definitely become more aggressive. Yeah, definitely. Uh, more irritable. It's sort of hard to say. Like I, like, I almost feel like doing a run of trend in the off season, uh, maybe even just probably a short period, just to like compare the of how I feel in the off season versus prep, because prep when you combine trend, especially in like you know the three fifty to four fifty milligram range, it's hard. It's like that and dieting is like a dangerous combo for like mood and things like that. You know. Yeah. So it would be interesting to see how I feel in the off season, but yeah, I would just say more irritable, more aggressive, less empathy. Uh, yeah. You? Yeah, definitely. Definitely all those, man. Like, and that's, that's one thing that I have to be like super aware of, especially like around my girl. She, cause she'll, she'll point out. She's like, like, are you good? Cause you're really just monotone and you're just saying like, yeah, like 10 times in a row. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, to be honest, like I'm just tired and hungry and like, you know, I'm just feeling the prep a little bit and like, as much as they know that, it's just good to remind them that it's not anything that they're doing. It's just the way that you're feeling. And then you kind of have to just, like, kick it up. Be like, oh, babe, you know what? Like, I'm sorry. Like, you know what? Like, here, give me a hug. Like, that kind of stuff. Even even if you're like, you're like, ah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even want to be, like, touched. Like, I'm hot. Like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, like, don't touch me because I'm, like, fucking hot. You know what I mean? Or, like, I'm just, like, just want to be, like, by myself. But I'm just like, babe, like, you want to cuddle? And she's like, you want to cuddle? I'm like. Not really, but like I know you'd like that, so you know what I mean. I'm like, yeah, yeah, baby, let's let's cuddle, let's cuddle. And she's like, oh, okay. And it makes her feel so much better. But if you're just like, oh, it's the drugs, man. Like it's like, no, dude, it's also you. Like you have a choice, right? Like you can't just like blame the drugs as much as. And that's the thing is, you're responsible for the drugs that you take. You're responsible for how you act, especially around your girlfriend, because she sees you all the time, and she's gonna pick up on the way that you are acting, especially if she's like. Uh, empathetic type of girl she's gonna be like feeling how you feel so if you're like oh yeah i'm good everything's good she's like but i know that you're feeling some way so why don't you just be honest with me right and then that's that's how things can get a little edgy so if you're just straight up honest like you know what like i'm just really irritable right now like <laughs> she's like she's like sipping on her like i forget what oh she's drinking like a diet coke and she's like slurping it a bit and i'm just like she's like is that bothering you that much i'm like i don't know why <laughs> I'm, I'm just irritable right now you know why it's honestly not a big deal but i'm like yeah. what the fuck you know <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you gotta yeah, check yourself yeah, man like if you want to be a bodybuilder you gotta you gotta check yourself sometimes right yeah bodybuilding is not worth it if your life is in shambles every time you do a show it's not worth being miserable no it's really and, and you're never gonna look your best and you're, you're not even gonna make it if you're just miserable all the time so yeah. you, you gotta like you gotta know like hey this is gonna affect me but you got to find ways to make yourself feel good, take yourself out of that. Because like you said, otherwise you're going over the dark side. Your fucking girlfriend's going to leave you. You're not going to have friends. No one's going to want to talk to you. And then you're back to square one, just being by yourself all the time. And that's not good. Right? Yeah. As much as much as you be like, oh, you know what? Like, like you hear guys like, oh, I'm just going to, I can just do this on my own. It's like, no, nah, you really can't, man. You know, you yeah, really can't. That's, you know? Not, that's not going to last. No. You, know, you might feel that way for a moment. Or like a week or a prep maybe, but then after the prep, you're gonna just be shaking your head at yourself. 
Yeah, bro. If you win the show, but you've you've alienated everybody who loves you, then who are you going to celebrate with? Yeah, you know? that's, that's that would be a terrible feeling, man. No, but... nobody wants to celebrate with an asshole. So you you got to make sure you're like putting in that extra time to to make the other people that support you feel good, even when you don't want to. That's that's a huge part of, of being a good bodybuilder, right? Yeah, what you got to do is you got to the people around you. You almost need to act like you're always in debt to them. Yeah. Like because you're in prep. If you have that mindset of like you owe these people because they're putting up with you in prep, which you pretty much should have, that will work because then you'll be conscious of any interactions you interactions you have with them. Just like be like a little bit extra bit nice and just be conscious. Even if you don't feel that way, like you almost like if you have to act, just act because it's gonna make them feel better. Like, yeah, hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like do some things you don't want to do. Like we do that for bodybuilding. We do all kinds of things we don't want to do for bodybuilding. Yep. You got to be able to do some things you don't want to do for the people that you love and the people that support you. Yeah, exactly. Like being being tired is not an excuse to to not take care of your girlfriend's needs. No, definitely. And, and understanding too, like what she needs, like you know, like the the love languages. Like you know, for me, I'm like more of like a physical lover, and like I really like to like you know basically just be physical. Like I like kisses, like all that shit. But maybe your girl's not the same way. You know, girls. You know, certain people, girls, guys, we have different love languages. So. Like, you know, my girl's like, hey, you know what? Like, if you can, like, clean the house for me before I get home tonight, then, like, that would make me feel so good. So if I know that and I don't do it, then I'm literally not loving her in the way that she wants me to. And if I do do it and she comes home and she feels loved and that's what she needs. Yeah. So if I'm like, oh, yeah, but but I'm giving you lots of hugs. I'm giving you lots of kisses. I'm buying you lots of presents. She's like, yeah, but that's not how I feel loved. Then none of that matters. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's huge. Yeah. Um, no, it's good, man. And at the end of the day, dude, like really, like at the end of the day, it's going to be you and your girl. Who else is there? You know, everybody else is going to be gone at some point, everybody else. And, you know, sometimes I think about that. And I'm like, yeah, this is my, this is my life right here. Yeah, man. hundred percent. Like a lot of guys, even I had the mentality, man, when I was young, just coming up, like I would be, I, I pick bodybuilding over anything. Like I would say that to myself. Like, yeah, you know I mean? yep. But now it's like, dude, bodybuilding can be snatched away from you in a second. 100%. You don't want to, you know, lose your girl and have your family not like you, your friends not like you. And then something happens, you can't bodybuild either. Oh boy. Yeah. How depressing would that be? Exactly, but, man. But it literally just takes effort to, to keep the people who are important and satisfied and, and have them want to be in your life. It just takes effort from you. Just don't be a dick. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And taking a drug that's making you be a dick, maybe lower the dose or switch it out for something else, man. Like there's other options. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need to do trend. Yeah. There's there's one night and, I, and and we were like uh we got into it a little bit, just over like little thing, whatever. We always squash it pretty quick. She's like, um, I think you should lower the trend dose. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, are you my coach? Like, I don't think so. That's not an option. <laughs> and she's like, well, if it's making you feel that way, I'm like, I'm like, nah, I got to check myself. Like, I got to do my my inner work. I got to, you know what? Like, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you I'm just let it, you just let it take over for a minute there. It's yep. going to happen. It's going to happen as long as you catch it. You yep. know what I mean? It's okay to like, it's okay to mess up. Yeah. It's okay. Everyone has moments, right? But you, you catch it, you take ownership of it and you apologize and try to find a solution. Like, don't just say sorry and then let it keep happening over and over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. You, gotta, you gotta be responsible for it. You gotta change. You know, say apologizing with no change or no solution is nothing. Actions speak louder than words. And I think like, yeah, women, women, they need to see that action, man. No, oh, yeah. no action. They're out the door. And we're so lucky, man. To have, we're so, I'm so grateful. Like, like our girls, especially to support what we do is very, very, very unique. There's 99.9% .9 of girls out there would not understand what we do and not like have any um, wish for us to continue doing what we do. But our girls, they want to see us succeed. And that's very, very awesome, man. So it's just, it's, as long as you keep reminding yourself that, it's like, you're going to be good. As soon as you start, start thinking like you're the most important person in the world, that's your ego, bro. That's your ego and it's taking over. And that's not cool. you know. And like you said, we've all been there. And I think that's just like, you know, as, as we get older, we realize these things, but you know, it's like, you want to realize that when you have the girl, the right girl, you don't want to fuck that up, man. You only get one, right? We were watching Dexter and, and that, uh, that guy said like, it's, 
it's a mathematical equation. You only get one good relationship. He's like, and he's like, I already had mine. So <laughs> fuck it up and it's gone. You don't get it again, man. So there you see like those those dudes that are like, yeah, I'm on my fifth marriage. It's like, well, when's that ever going to end? You know what I mean? It's like, Dude, you, you hate you, that. Man. You yeah. had it and she's gone. And now you got to wait for another lifetime to get her again. <laughs> so yeah. Sucks, man. You know? So true. Um. All right. How do you fix acne um, on your back and shoulders? I'm doing everything I can, and I've got my hygiene on point. What else? I've never dealt with this, man. Yeah. You know, luckily for me. So I've never had to, like, come up with a solution for this. I know clients that swear by using head and shoulder shampoo as, like, a body wash. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that works really well for, like, back knee and stuff like that. So I don't know if this guy's already tried that, but uh yeah i don't know yeah i mean yeah like if you're if you're on point with your hygiene then i guess you're exfoliating your skin you're putting on like maybe an acne cream which i don't think acne creams work at all um i think that if you're if you're prone to having acne then if you're taking a cycle you're going to get it worse that's just kind of like there's there's side effects with steroids right so if you're prone to certain things you're going to get it someone who's prone to getting gyno you're probably going to get worse gyno. Someone who's getting prone to acne, you're going to get worse acne. Now, I, I had some acne issues when I was like a little bit younger. And I do think it was mostly due to the gear that I was using, um, not having like the cleanest source and things like that, which I found out to be 100% true. It was just like bunk gear and like shitty gear. And like, that's a real thing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that that could be a thing. Like, honestly, like if, if you're really breaking out, like I would either say you should maybe like what are you taking first of all we don't know because there's maybe certain things that could aggravate it more than others i do know that like certain people they might need to take like an accutane but now i, I don't really believe in that anymore um because after um being with nat nat actually had like really bad um like cystic acne like all over her face and stuff like that and she tried everything too and then she actually she was the one that got me into the medical medium books because she had to do a liver detox with his book, the liver cleanse, and it literally changed her whole life. And that's why she believes in that stuff. So I think that you could probably do a lot in terms of like detoxing your liver. Cause a lot of that shit could just be heavy metals, toxins built up. And then you add more heavy metals and toxins via the chemicals. And it's just, then your body just like goes overboard because your skin's an organ, right? And your skin is the largest organ. And it's anything that's trying to detox out of your body is going to come through your skin um, and through your uh, through your waist and stuff like that. But yeah, so I, I would definitely go into like maybe checking out your liver, checking out stuff like that. Get the medical medium books. Um, tanning also is huge. Tanning makes a big difference too, whether it's in the sun or sunbeds. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like we covered it all at that point. Um, well, why is this one so small? Sir, nowadays there <laughs> there is a lot of fake stuff in the market, especially especially in India. Suggest which the best and legit brands in the market. Well, we no source talk, no source yeah, talk. Yeah, we can't do that. Sorry, bro. Hope you find something good though. Um, Q uh, question: uh, Is there a ratio of test to EQ to prevent estrogen sides? Ratio of test to EQ. Um, I would, well, what do you, what do you think? I would use EQ. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan. I would probably say like generally like two to one, like you probably want to take double test and, and half EQ. And that's probably going to be like the same double test to, uh, two tests to one EQ, two tests to one DECA, just stuff like that. Generally. Pretty um, much. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Um, why would using growth hormone, uh, low dose growth hormone, two to three IUs, why would that cause an acute case of pancreatitis? Pancreatitis. Um, that would be inflammation of the pancreas. Inflammation is immune system causing swelling. Um, I, I don't know if that would be caused by the GH necessarily. If you have an inflammation of your pancreas, that could be related to something else. 
regulating uh, blood sugar and digesting food. So if your blood sugar is messed up, then you take growth hormone, which may uh, exacerbate that. Yeah. You know, probably want to probably want to um, start checking out your blood sugar more often. If you're if your uh, blood sugar is all messed up, and then you you start taking more gear and messing it up more, then that that could be like the one like the straw that breaks camel's back. So maybe just start cutting down on your carbs, give your pancreas a little break. Uh, any opinions on CJC, I plan morelin, morelin, like any of those uh, growth hormone releasing peptides? See, like we talk about that, but we just use growth hormone. Right. Yeah. If you're using if you're using HGH, then you don't need to take a peptide to get and and we also had Kurt talking about this too, where it's like your body can still naturally only produce so much. So even if you max out your pituitary gland, you're only going to be getting a small amount in like relation to taking an exogenous HGH. It's like night and day. Again, it's like the creatine or the trend difference. It's like, what's your goal here? Because there's a lot of guys that are trying to get the performance enhancement without going over to the dark side unquote it's like well you're just dipping your toe in here but if you want to go for a swim you got to dive in bro well that's the thing it's like they're dipping their toe and not realizing that putting their their whole foot in isn't much worse <laughs> exactly <laughs> and you just get way more results <laughs> like, yeah. you're spending the money anyways yeah 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 exactly that's like the whole thing now with fitness it's like a little bit of test a little bit of primo a little bit of gh a little bit of clean but it's like if you do too much then it's like bad <laughs> like, yeah you know what i mean and it's all these guys just you know with just like mid physiques it's like they're kind of like the natty or not people it's yeah like they, could, they could be natty like if they had really good genetics but like i don't think so <laughs> exactly that, that's like the group of people that they're in it, it even gets so convoluted with uh with, with coaches putting uh athletes on stage here because like we're, we're talking with an athlete going to a natural show it's like oh yeah my coach just put me on clan and i'm like well that's you're not natural really like it's still a banned substance. So like there's a million and one ways you can like pretend to be natural, but like, are you really natural if you're taking clenbuterol? It's a pharmaceutical substance for horses. Like that's yeah, you know, it's a performance enhancing substance. 100 percent Anabolic. Yep. With mostly. Yeah. Uh why do long esters increase nitrogen retention more than short esters? No idea. I don't even know if that's true. Yeah. And even if it is, it's probably because the longer ester is acting in your body for longer. Um, if you use injectable L-carnitine, do you have to take it with caffeine for fasting cardio to help with fat mobilization? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think the carnitine is going to work anyway. 100%. Yeah, I mean, you, you could definitely stack things like that, but... Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's absolutely necessary. There, there's no way. Um, are body changes more significant on super drill versus test on a mill per mill basis? Why does it seem that way? Well, I mean, the super draw is gonna work a lot faster. So yeah. you might know the results quicker if you're just like taking that for like a week or two weeks as opposed to like injecting like testy for two or three weeks, but I can guarantee you, like, I feel like the results of, like, six weeks of test would probably be better than six weeks of super draw. Yep. And your work would be way better. 100%. Yeah. You're yeah. you're going to be killing your liver with one versus you're actually going to be getting, like, sustained gains with the other. So I remember taking super draw, like, yeah. back in the day when I was, like, 20. And, like, it just, like, broke my dick. Like, it didn't work. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I'm never taking that shit ever again, bro. <laughs> Never take it up. Yeah, it's definitely not worth it. Uh, all of these things in my mind, like whether it's a super draw or whether it's a trust alone or an oral trend or like any of these things, if it's like, if it's something that's, um, what's the word? Like, uh, what's the word? like something that's like uh, out of an ordinary, something that, you know, it's not like normally talked about or if it's touted to be like something like super powerful, it's, 99.9% .9 of the time, if not 100% of the time, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Dude, you know what those drugs are like? Those drugs are like 
you know, in all the new Jurassic Park, Park movies, yeah, like, like always, like some crazy hybrid dinosaur that they try to make for like military purposes, yeah, and it goes fucking nuts and kills everybody. That's what those drugs are like. Hundred like, percent, yeah. You know what I mean? Like if like steroids are just regular dinosaurs, and then and then they try to make this like crazy ass oral <laughs> that's like trend and anadrol mixed together, and then. You, it just destroys you from the inside out like it makes you crazy <laughs> oh yeah 100 yeah, yeah it, exotic it, exotic was the word i was thinking like anything exotic not nah. like pro bodybuilders don't use that we don't mess with it we don't recommend it we don't recommend it we don't give it to our clients we don't use it nothing no no not at all don't stay away from it all together yeah. Chris. even like even like orals in general like especially i mean orals and prep are one thing but like to take an oral in the off season they like have clients ask me all the time I have people message me all the time. Oh, what do you think about this stack? And they're taking like, it's like test, tranny, anadrol, like Winstrol. Yeah. What's the purpose? So I'm trying to get huge. I'm like, God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a terrible idea, man. Yeah. The oral, the, there's nothing magical about an oral. It just, to me, it's like poison. I'm yeah. like, this is going to hurt me, like for sure. So like in prep for six or eight weeks, I don't mind. Cause I'm like, I'm going to look sick. And at least I'm doing a lot of cardio. My diet's really good. Hydration's really good. Like I have all these things going for me, but the last thing I want to do while I'm eating a thousand grams of carbs a day and, and train doing like minimal cardio training, like super hard and heavy is like throw some androl in for my, my liver and kidneys to also deal with <laughs> like, like why? hundred percent. Um, all right. What are your favorite shoes for leg day? We we literally just talked about that yesterday. You're wearing your your chucks. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, oh, what do you got? I wear the old Atomics, man. Oh, those are sick, bro. Dude, those are sick. Can't beat these for leg day. Oh man, yeah, yeah. So they're like they're like slippers, but like but like sneakers. I almost forgot about Atomics because they're hard to get in Canada. Yeah, dude, I spent a lot of money on these over the years. I've had like every color. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to find the white, like original ones that I had I had a sick pair of those, but I wore them so much. Actually, I went through two pairs of those and I'm trying to find another pair. Can't get them anymore. I know the ones you're talking about. The, the ones that Jay Cutler used to wear. They're fucking so cool. <laughs> so sick, dude. He used to yeah. wear those all the time. But uh, but yeah, and I can fit my orthotics in them really nicely. Yeah, which is the support I need for my foot. So they they're great, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I used to really like wearing the Atomics and the Rider Wear because they do fit really nicely. If you want to put an insole or a, um, an orthotic in there, they, they they fit perfectly for that. Yeah, but I I forgot about Atomics. How come nobody wears them anymore? Like you're the only one. Just like out of style, I guess. I guess, yeah. I, I wear them purely because of how they feel. Yeah. Like not, I don't wear them because they're red camouflage. Like I I honestly wish they were just like black or like white or gray or something like that. But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I used to be a big fan of those, the rider wear. Um, now I wear the barefoot shoes. I've had like so many different like barefoot shoes. So I wore the Vivo barefoots for a while. I didn't mind those, but they're kind of like a little bit more skinny. Uh, not as much. They have a wide toe box, but they're kind of more skinny in the middle. Whereas like generally like bodybuilders have like flatter, wider feet. So they they didn't fit like perfectly um but they're nice but they're really expensive they were like 300 dollars plus and i'm like oh that's that's a lot of money for a shoe and then i had the uh feel grounds and the feel grounds are pretty cool but they're kind of they're not like perfectly barefoot they kind of have like some plastic on the bottom or rubber rubberized areas um they're okay but those ones are really good quality i will say the the feel grounds, I, I do wear those when I'm walking outside because it's kind of more of like a, like I said, a hybrid between like a walking running shoe versus like a barefoot traditional shoe. They really do look stylish and nice. Uh, I got like a black high top pair with like a white uh, rubberized insole. So I, I love those and I wear them like, I've been wearing them for probably eight months now and they have not like come apart at all. Um, whereas unfortunately the Vivos, they did rip. Now I use the barefoot shoes. You you think you tried the barefoot shoes. Antoine, where's the barefoot shoes? I think they're really cool. I really like the design of them. Um, mine wore out a little bit, um, but I'm going to get a, a new pair. But I have a low top pair. I have a high top pair. But then the funny thing is on leg day, I just fucking take my shoes off anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know why. It's just a it's a mental thing. It's like, like all right, man, like I got my I got my shoes. I'm gonna wear my shoes today. And I get into it and I'm like, fuck it, I'm taking them off. <laughs> <laughs> but man, I I miss it. I uh, you know what this is like. Like 20 think about this, 2015. Okay, you're walking in the gym, drinking your BSN NO explode. Oh yeah. You got atomics on. You got a gasp football jersey. Oh yeah. And gas pants. And you're just with a beanie on. That's the best. And you're just ready to just go insane in there. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the good old days, man. The good old days, man. God damn. Those are the best. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's cool that there's a lot more um like good shoes for training now than there was before. Cause before it was literally just the tonics and then the rider wear came out. And then that was pretty much it. And it's like, they're, they're not really like, you can't really wear them anywhere else besides the gym. Like if you're wearing those like out and about, people will look at you like that guy's a goof. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this no, guy's not, a loser. Not, not the move. The only like really, I mean, well, everyone wears Jordans now. Yeah. And, and like chucks are still kicking around. A lot of people still wear the chucks. Me, of course, I'm a big, big chucks guy. Um, and Jordans, but yeah. But I mean, they're very versatile now because I mean, <laughs> There's not really any like gym shoe brands that are like dominating. Like I mean, like, when Rider Wars first came out, everyone had them. Oh yeah, right. But now, like you don't even see those very often. I, I used to love the Rider Wars just because they were they were cheap, man. Like you, yeah. they go on sale. You got a pair for like sixty bucks, seventy yeah. bucks. It was awesome, and their yeah. customer service was so good. I'd be like, oh my my pair ripped. Here's a picture, and they'd be like, okay, here's a new pair on the way. And I'm like, damn, that's sick. Like that's why I wore them for years and years. Um, no, I, I like the I like the barefoot shoes, man. Like they're pretty cool. They're comfortable. They are pretty stylish. So you guys check out barefoot shoes. Uh use code strong. What is the first time you ever saw a pro bodybuilder in real life? You remember? Yeah, I it was Jose Raymond in 2014. What'd you think? That guy's a freak of freaks. <laughs> like he was like uh he was like peak off season, like, like in between, like those Mister Olympia runs, like him versus Flex, like every show. Yeah, yeah, he did a guest posing at our local show in, in Newfoundland, and uh, yeah, he was just like a refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. he went up. He did some like me and him were talking about this not long ago. Actually, he went up and he did a freestyle like pose to some like slow R and B song. And like it was just crazy because there's like a bunch of people in the in the crowd in like Newfoundland that just like don't really know anything about bodybuilding. And like here's like Jose Raymond like doing some like slow like posing routine, like super artistic to like this R and B song. Like it was just like it was insane. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching Jose Raymond training videos and just being like, I don't understand how someone could be that vascular. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Like the most veins. The, the first time, the first pro bodybuilder I ever met was Scott Abel. I don't even know if you know Scott Abel. He's like, I know who um, he is. You know who he is? Yeah. He's not super well known, but I actually went to a seminar um, out in BC. Uh, that was like back in 2010. And I go there and I thought this guy was out of his mind because like during the seminar, he, first of all, he'd like, does like these crazy, he calls them leg 30s. He'll do like, 30 reps front squat, uh, 30 reps uh, sissy squat, 30 reps lunge, 30 rep leg press, and, like, do that as, like, a circuit. And that's, like, day one. Like, he taught us, like, oh, this is how you, like, get big legs. I'm like, really? I don't know. Like, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then on, on day two, it was, like, during during the lunch, he's talking about how he was offered a, a muscle tech contract. And this was, like, when muscle tech was, like, muscle tech contract. And he said that he didn't want to take the contract because he didn't want to sell out. And I was like, oh, this guy's insane. <laughs> yeah. like, That's crazy. Dude, like, I'll, I'll sell my soul for that. Con no, I'm just kidding. But, like, you're offered a million-dollar contract. Like, if you're going to talk, like, who cares if you don't use the supplements, bro? Like, that's your career. Like, yeah, that's, that's you know money. I mean? That's, like, yeah, that's just smart, like, to yeah. take and work for them. Like, like if, if Nike or Coca-Cola is like, hey, Mo, like, wear our shit you're gonna be like yes 
yeah, obviously. Sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Nike. Where do I sign? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll throw out my signature. Other... I don't care. Yeah. I'll, I'll burn all the other clothes I have. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I'm gonna retire after that. I got my contract. I'm good. Exactly. Yeah, I was just like, uh oh, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna learn nothing from this guy. Yeah, <laughs> definitely nothing financial. No, oh, man. Uh, overrated, underrated, perfectly rated gear edition. Well, we kind of alluded to that already. Overrated, any of those exotic, exotic morals, super duper overrated. Yeah, super overrated. Yeah, underrated, test, test, perfectly rated. That's a tricky one. GH. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's as good as people say it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I could maybe even swap uh, uh GH could be underrated because people kind of just focus mostly on gear, I found I find. Where they're like, oh well, you then again. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I think you're right. T test could be also perfectly rated, but nowadays people seem to underrate it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think people yeah. I think people just need to think they need so much. Yeah. Right. With like all this different crazy stuff and peptides and fucking serums and stuff. I'm like, just take tests. Like everyone that comes to me yeah. that like wants to take a serum or oral or I'm just like, just do 500 milligrams of test a week. You're going to get everything you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, but there's like, I don't want to inject myself. And I'm like, but you'll kill your liver with fucking 10 orals every day. Like it makes no sense. It's like, it's like, oh, like I want to be a big body. It's like everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but no one wants to lift heavy ass weights. It's like, Everybody wants to be a bodybuilder, but no one wants to inject themselves with stuff. It's like, that's like half of what you do. Like, if you're just trying to take everything orally, like, you're just going to die before you even get any gains. Yeah, 100%. Bizarre. Uh, whoops, I just exited that. What other questions we got? Um, you want to do You want to do a deep one? Yeah. Another yeah. deep one? What, what are your, this is the one that I thought of, actually. Actually, wait, we got one more. I think this is a funny one. <laughs> Is it normal that your sperm count is zero if you're on cycle? <laughs> I mean, it can happen. <laughs> Have you ever gotten your 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 sperm tested? No, nah, I'm pretty sure I'm at zero though. Do you have any uh, intention of of checking and potentially trying to get that number up? Oh yeah, I mean, eventually for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but when the time comes to make a little baby mo, yeah, we're gonna fucking start. Slam the ATG. I mean, I mean, yeah, dude. Like it's uh, like I I, I kind of said like it's kind of like Russian roulette in terms of like where your sperm counts can end up because there there's that there's that one there's that one bullet in in the gun and sometimes you get pregnant just fully on a cycle, but sometimes you just got nothing left and that seems to be the case with like most guys. So. I don't know, man. I think it's just, I think really it's just luck of the draw. Just like Russian roulette, it's like, might happen, might not. Don't know. But if your goal is to have kids, then it's kind of counterproductive to be on cycles generally. So, I don't yeah. know. I, I can't have kids until I know I can provide for them and this is my avenue to do it. So, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same with us. Like, we have no desire to try to bodybuild, do our lifestyle, and have kids at the same time. Just seems like, it just seems crazy to us at this point, you know, especially because because Nat's like still actively competing. She wants to go pro and wellness like that would just completely derail everything for her, you oh, know. Yeah. And she's and like she's like super motherly. Like she's got those motherly instincts, man. Like it, I I just know for sure as soon as she had that baby, it's like any of her goals would just be like secondary, like so like just yeah. Just in a way, I, I I think in a sense, at least for like the first few years that you have a baby. I, I feel like that's just how it should be and how it kind of has to be. Like if you're the mother, you know what I mean? Not to, not to say that like, you know, once a kid gets a couple years old, you can't revisit goals. A lot of women do that successfully. You know what I mean? But I think it's just like, if you're trying to accomplish something like we're trying to accomplish, that's just like so selfish and take so much out of you, dude. Like imagine living our life and throwing a kid on top of it. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's even like a conversation I have with Blake. I'm like, I'm like, wow, bro. Like I commend you for being able to be a good dad and, and get all the sh the stuff done you have to do for him for your wife and for bodybuilding because that is not easy yeah yeah that that lake's a man yeah and and he did say like you know he told me like sarah's a beast man like sarah does a lot of that work and she because of her he's able to do what he he's got to do for bodybuilding so you know it's like that's that's another that's another girl man it's like you know what i mean that's a super unique girl right there because there's not many of them that would let you go to the gym <laughs> when you yeah. should be like watching your kid you know what i mean so it's like yeah 
Crazy, crazy. All right, so my question was, I was thinking, what's your biggest strength and what's your biggest weakness? Mm. It's a tough one. I was thinking, I was thinking of this in the shower. We were talking to Juju, but things coming up in the shower. And I was like, damn, that'd be a good question for the podcast. And uh, I'll be honest, I even struggle to kind of think of a a strength and a weakness. I know for me, my strength is that I can like massively positively impact people. Like I, I know that I can really make people feel good about themselves. And it's pretty easy for me to do that. And it makes me feel good. And I feel like that's a big strength of mine. Um, a weakness of mine is that I feel like, you know, sometimes I get overwhelmed with emotion. And sometimes I get like, just where I'm like, man, I'm feeling so emotional. I, I don't even know what to do with that right now. Which it, it's okay because when I feel like that, like I feel like, like I have, like again, man, like this is all about our girls, I guess, this podcast, but I, I feel so fortunate to have her to understand because like I've never had someone where I could like be that open, be that emotional. And she's like, yeah, this is a good thing versus having someone that is like, it's almost like so domineering. It's like men shouldn't cry, men shouldn't be emotional. She's like, no, no, no. You need to cry right now. I'm like, what? I need to. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's like, you feel good now, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah. You just let it out. Like that's good. Like you should be let. I'm like, oh, okay, fuck, thanks. I feel safe now. I can heal, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's you, huge, man. You gotta let yourself. I think that's a sign of intelligence, actually, to like let yourself feel emotions and like be aware of them. You know what I mean? I think to me, it's unintelligent to try to block emotions out because they build up and then they can make you make bad decisions. Like you know what I mean? You need yeah. to like. When you're feeling like emotional about something and like, it, you know, so emotions can stray you, you know what I mean? You can make impulsive decisions based on emotions that are not strategic, like to your life. Right. Um, so if you just let yourself, like if you're feeling a certain type of way, communicate, like if you have a girl to communicate it with and talk it out, and like you said, just feel it and let it out, you feel better and then you can make a more like educated decision. Right. So yeah. I think that's absolutely huge. Yeah. Um, I think my biggest strength is, is like self-awareness, you know, like I, I think I just, I, I've been through so much in my life. Like I just know myself like very, very well. That doesn't mean to say like, I don't ever like lose control or like lose my temper or anything like that. But anytime that happens, I'm really good at like catching it and just being like, okay, like, you know, like reel it back in or yeah. even I'm really good at, you know, just getting through my day. Even if I'm dealing with something like that, I'm really good at just being like, okay, you're feeling this way, but this is how you need to act right now. Like this is how you need to present yourself right now. Cause like these people need you to be a certain type of way. And like, you can't drag other people down with you. Like, you know, so I think like self-awareness is like a really good strength of mine. Yeah, that's good. I think a weakness of mine is letting people have too much of me. You yeah. Know? I think that's, that's a big one, man. Yeah. yeah. I think I, I just, I just give too much of myself sometimes and I don't, and I don't take care of me, you know? Yeah. I kind of goes full circle with the self-awareness to be able to like know that about myself. But like, and, but like my, my issue is I continuously do it like, you yeah. know, but I don't know. I, I, and again, I, I think, you know, I just feel like I have to just, I have, feel like I'd be redlining all the time. Like, I feel like I need to be giving my all to every day, like every minute of the day I need to be, Toward, put towards something productive and if it's not then i kind of feel like a failure or yeah. i feel unproductive and i beat myself up over that so that's that's probably my weakness yeah i, I know another weakness for mine is, is uh organization with certain things that's like a huge thing that i'm learning it like we were talking about like taxes the other day tax day and i was like i had like all of my expenses just like in a folder not organized at all and now it's like, why don't you just like organ? Like, look how organized I am. Like, I have got like everything in folders, like everything sorted out. I'm just like, I just got like a pile of shit. And then that day, I'm just like, oh my god, like, why didn't I do this earlier? She, uh, she's like, hey, you know, you could just make this so much easier for yourself. You just kind of chip away at it instead of leaving it all last minute. So that's definitely something I'm working on too. Yeah, that's a learning curve, though. That's a oh yeah, yeah. Business. You almost, I know for me, especially in business, like. I'm I'm pretty good now, but I have made so many mistakes. That's why I'm good. It's because I, I need to like mess up and be like, okay, this cost me this much money or this much time. I don't want that to happen again. So now I'm gonna like do this, right? Yeah. And, like, you just keep doing those things over time, and next thing you know, like you're super structured. Like everything's where it needs to be. Like you know, you got your shit like set up. So 
But uh, yeah, that's a tough one. It's it's tough to again, man, when you're so busy, right? So many different things coming at you all the time. Like we have to coach, we have to bodybuild, we have to be on social media, and it's like some days it's just a lot. You know, yeah. it's easy to just become unorganized just because you're not paying attention to the details and like putting your receipts in the right place. Like, you know, something that takes one second, but you avoid it every day for months. And then next thing you know, you got three hours, you got to sit down and organize. Yeah. Know, it's, like, right? it's, like, it's like, it's like spend the second or spend the three hours at the end of it. Like, it's like, you got to pick like, you know, but either way, the time is going to be there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's a little bit of a blessing and a curse. Like, the, the strength from that is that I can be like very present all the time. And then the downside is like, I haven't thought about, Oh, well, I got to do taxes next year. So I should start that now kind of a thing. But yeah. Yeah. another strength for you, man, is like your fucking, your strength is that you're fucking like, just like a TRX man. Like you can just fucking go, you know what I mean? Like when you, when you, when you put the get like the gas, when you put the fucking pedal to the metal, like you're just a monster, bro. Like you just fucking go. And that's like, like I, I love that about you, man. Like it's like I aspire to be like that. And even Antoine tells me when we're talking about training, he's like Morgan can just fucking get into it and just hammer, hammer, hammer like fucking monster. And you know me, I'm like slow, methodical. So I'm trying to take on some of that because I know being able to have more of that explosiveness, more of that just like fucking grind is gonna be like where my opportunity for growth is too, right? So. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks for saying that, man. Of course, man. We we all learn from each other, man. That's that's it. Oh, right? Absolutely, bro. Hundred percent. There's so many inspirational people around us. Like people are inspiring in their own way. Like like everything Antoine's been through. Like you know everything you've been through and got through. Like Blake said, freaking dad doing this. Like yeah. you know, like like Quentin's just like an alien. Like <laughs> there's just like, <laughs> there's so many. Like we all have our own like strengths and weaknesses. Like you know, yeah. So it's a pretty cool environment. 100% like I, I was talking to like I had a client who was just like going through like a really rough time like just all this like basically everything you know when shit hits the fan it's like there's one thing and then everything goes all at once yeah. and so I'm on the phone with him for like an hour and basically the, the one thing that he told me that I said that um, actually helped him the most was I told him that when you're faced with challenges they're not in the way challenges are the way and I, I keep reminding myself that too because it's like when you feel like why is this happening to me? It's because it's there. That challenge is there. It's happening to you to make you grow. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's it, man. You know, that's the only way you can look at it. Yeah. You, can't, exactly. you, you, you have to choose to look at it that way. Cause you can look at it. Like you said, why is this happening to me? Oh, this has like messed this up for me now. It's like, yeah, but has it like, you know, everything that happens to you sets you on a certain path in life. And I'm sure like right now, like we've all been through a lot of shit to get here. But yeah. like you want to like change anything, because like, you know, that would change where you are right now. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a Kai Green man. It's like it's like the more that you've dealt with, the more trauma you've had. That's all making you who you are now, and that that gives you the ability to then help other people when they go through that stuff. Because then they can relate. It's like, hey man, guess what? I've dealt with that exact same thing, and they're like, what really? Like I had no idea that you went through that because it just looks like you're like loving your life so much, and it's like we love our lives now because we remember where we came from. Yeah. You know? And it's like, we're just so grateful now to be in a place where we actually have like peace in our lives, you know, like what well, we yeah. get to do, what we love. And it's like, it's always good. We always rehash the same deal at the end of the day. It's like, we're grateful. We get to be bodybuilders, but like, but it's real, man. Like you're living your life right now. And if you could do anything, but live the life the way you want to, then what else more is there? Like you, you live until you die that way. That's it, man. Like, yeah, exactly. No, it's absolute privilege to do what you want to do every single day. Yeah. Like, and it's still hard. Like, life's hard. Life yeah. is super hard. Like, I think about that sometimes. Like, man, there's just never any stuff to do. <laughs> like, No, man. But, but like, I, I just couldn't imagine having to wake up and, like, go somewhere and do things that I really don't enjoy doing. Like, that would be the worst existence possible. And I know there's a lot of people out that live like that. Because they feel like there's no other option. They feel like they, ex they accepted it. They accepted it. You've like, accepted it. Yeah. Like, like if we if we talk about, I mean, we're not going to get into it because we've already talked about it. Like, but like from you know from when I left high school to like where I am now to like when you left high school to where you are now, it's like we were faced with all these opportunities to like live a normal life and be told what to do and essentially be instructed what to do with our time to please other people. But we were just like, fuck that. Like that's yeah. not that's not conducive to my goals. That's not conducive to what I'm trying to get out of this life. And because we went our own path 
by going through our own path, we had to go through a lot of hardship, spent a lot of time broke as a joke because we're trying to do this bodybuilding thing, training clients, like coaching people. It's hard in the beginning when you're a kid in your early 20s and no one believes in you and everyone's just waiting for you to quit. Right. But it's just by not quitting and persevering and persevering and getting better and getting better that you earn people's respect. Right. And then by earning people's respect, you know, you get success essentially. Right. You can, you, you can just never accept that you can't do it. Whether you think, Oh, I can't afford it. It's nonsense. Where you think, Oh, I, I can't because I have my boss telling me I got to be here. No, no, no. You can always decide. You can yeah. always decide. And whether, whether you stay or whether you go, both are a decision, whether you accept or whether you don't accept, both are decisions, you know? Sacrifice, man. Yeah. You got to be willing to sacrifice, right? At the end of the day, you got to stand up for what you want. And at the end of the day, you got to decide how you want to live your life. Because if you if you don't have a decision on how you want to live your life, then the, the universe or other people will just decide for you, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. And then one day, <laughs> you're going to look back and you're going to understand all of this when it's too late. You yeah, know? man. Right? Yeah. That's it. Good one. Good one. We're so wise, bro. We're Dude. so wise. Yeah, by being such idiots for so long. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. No, I love it, bro. No, that was, that was good, bro. You know, it's it's always good when it's just you and I. We can just chat it up and just talk about whatever. And we'll do it again next week. Obviously, we'll get some more guys on. And yeah, we had a little uh, little. I don't know what would you call this. Like the, girl, the girly stuff podcast. People say, well, what, what, what's with these guys? Everybody else is talking about all the girly stuff. And then Kurt only wants to talk about the science stuff. It's like, uh, is that girly stuff? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> we're just, we're just hanging out and talking. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> is that what they say? Someone, someone said, someone said, yeah. Why do, why do all the other guys want to talk about girly stuff? While Kurt only wants to talk about science stuff. Yeah, because this is life, man. This is fucking life, and we're people. You guys, you guys see bodybuilders, and yeah, we talk about training, we talk about gear, talk about food, but like that's such surface level stuff. Like, like to do what we do, like you have to be, you have to be a deep thinker because you like there's so many times throughout your bodybuilding career that you're gonna have to like really reach deep within yourself, man. Because, like, there's so much adversity, so many things to deal with, like, so many challenges. Like, they just never really stop. And, like, that's what I mean. Like, for someone to get to the top level of bodybuilding, like, that's just a hard motherfucker, man. Yeah. Like, it's it's takes so much, like, you know, so. And sometimes, it, sometimes it's more, yeah, like, sometimes it's more about, like, you could get, you could just get lost in fucking PubMed research. And you, you find 100, 100 articles that say one thing, you find 100 that say the opposite. You could get fucking lost in the sauce all day, but it's like, we're just connecting. We're just chilling, hanging out. We're just talking about whatever we want to talk, whatever comes to our minds. Like we're, we're not over analyzing things. Like if you're, if you're so focused on like, Oh, like I've got to find the right study that, you know, tells me exactly what to do. And then I, I can't act until it's just like, no dude, like just do whatever the fuck you want to do. You know what I mean? Like just do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Don't think about it so much. The more you think about it, the more you're slowing yourself down. Think less, do more. Exactly, man. Like I tell, tell people this all the time. Like, listen, all you got to do is like eat a good diet, train hard, you know, take your subs, like <laughs> do that day after day after day. And all the answers you're looking for, you're going to find by yourself. Your body's going to tell you, you know, and you're, and you seeking knowledge, you trying something. Okay, this didn't work. Let's try this. Oh, that worked. I'll stick with this. Continue to do that over and over and over. You're just going to get better and better at eating and training and resting and recovering. And then your body's going to keep progressing as you get better at that. You just got to be passionate. You just got to want it. If you want it, you're going to figure it out. Stop going to other people. I mean, use other sources and other people for information to try, but don't think because someone tells you something or you read something that it's going to work for you. It's yeah. just not how it goes. Like, trust me. Trust it's so, me. So true. Yeah. yeah. It's like the more you seek the answers from others, the less you have confidence in having the answers for yourself. Yeah, you know, so it's such a good point, man. Yeah. yeah, just go for the ride. You know, that's it. Go for the ride and eat your food. Take your test. Take your GH and watch Canadian Beef podcast. <laughs> Get your blood work checked. Get your blood work checked, and then make sure you fucking hit that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, share us a comment, share on Instagram, and uh, try to ruffle our feathers because you can't. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Talk shit in the comments. Let's see what you yeah. got. Yeah, we love it. Okay, well, whoever has the best chirp, 
for either one of us in the comments is we're going to feature it on the next episode. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, get you your see turn. if you can try to bother us and get under our skin with something because. Yeah, okay. we're we're asking for this right now. We're probably gonna regret this. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we're gonna be crying. It's like, oh fuck, we should. Yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna hit us where it hurts. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's That's all, all good. good. We yeah. can handle it. You know, we at the end of the day, we, we fucking put ourselves on stage in thongs, basically to expose our entire bodies to be judged by everybody who's watching. So, I just honestly think of it as gracing the audience with my glutes. Oh yeah, you know? That's it. Like, here, look at these bad boys stride at fucking watermelons. Well, that's just it. At the end of the day, they're coming to your page. At the end of the day, they're coming to your show to watch you. At the end of the day, you're listening to us on our podcast. So yeah. thank you. We appreciate it. And we love you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing but oh, yeah, love. Bro. Nothing but love from over here. Oh, yeah, man. Lots of love, brother. We'll talk. Bro. Yeah. See you tomorrow. All right, brother. Peace. Bro.